Today is uh, an incredible day for me, uh, but it is a little bittersweet. I um, announced that I will be retiring on August 31st of this year. Jefferson Parish Sheriff Newell Norman's announcement that he would be retiring after 40 years, nearly 40 years in public service, shocked many people. The sheriff is leaving office at the end of next month with a former state representative, Joe Lepinto, taking over the sheriff's role. The sheriff joins us this morning to talk about the decision. That may have been the friendliest news conference you had since I've known you yesterday. It was, it was a very nice experience, and I really uh, am you know, enjoyed the, the talk back and forth with, with the uh, reporters and so forth in, in this announcement and look forward to the, my next challenge. Why now? Um, you have received resounding support from voters every time you've gone to the polls and uh, 2015 no different. What happened in the last two years that made you say this is the time for me to to step well, down? Well two things. Uh, we teach a lot about leadership and in this these leadership classes and training we talk a lot about having a succession plan and that good leaders know when it's time to leave and, and things of that nature uh, and so you know you, you look at yourself critically in the mirror each and every day and, and although I still believe that I could be effective uh, the fact of the matter is when certain things happen um, and I get this call from WWL radio it really caused you know me to reflect upon where I was, how long I've been in this business, so forth and so on. CEOs of major organizations average life five to seven years, and yeah. you know I've been almost 11 years now, and uh, Harry's number two since 1995. Uh, so been in a leadership role for a long, long time. And you know how the rumor mill goes in 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 this community. I mean, when you step down from the most arguably the most powerful position in Jefferson Parish to become a radio talk show host in the middle of, of your third term. Um, I mean, the speculation was there's got to be something more to this than, than meets the eye. Well, you know, there's always going to be that. People are skeptical and cynical about certain things and the reality and everyone thinks, oh man, you're leaving this, you're leaving that. I have never been um, wrapped up into the trappings of the office. I, you know, was, we were saying off air, I'm an operations guy. I like turning the wrenches. I was perfectly happy being the number two and, and serving an icon, quite frankly. And, and you've been a political animal for years. I mean, when you, when you become a radio talk show host, I mean, I assume you'll, you'll be doing politics, stuff like that. You just can't be campaigning for somebody anymore. No, I mean, you know, and, and actually that's one of the things that is kind of nice too. Uh, the fact of the matter is that I get to completely divorce myself from that side of, of my life. It, you know, in the sheriff's office, I really liked the enforcement side, the operations side. It was never one that the, the political side was something that I'd wake up in the morning and get all excited about, because I did not. What went into your decision uh, to choose Joe Lepento, your chief deputy, to be the, um, uh, your replacement um, in the interim, when you have other people in the department who've been there longer? Well, you know, this, this uh, tends to be more of, um, I don't want to say a, a young man's game, but it, there's a lot of stress and a lot of pressure in this position. Things are very dynamic. They're happening all the time. Um, I get up in the morning, I'm 130 or 140 emails down. And, you know, so you, you have to be on your game each and every moment. As I looked um, really over a year ago, two years ago, I kind of started to think a little bit about whether or not I was going to run again. Uh, whether this was going to be yeah. my last term. And it, the necessity for a succession plan and Joe having served eight years with the JPSO and the Detective Bureau, the Patrol Division, served as a state legislature and chaired uh, the Criminal Justice Committee, and also served as a lawyer uh, with Danny Martini, who's been a, a, a good friend. And, uh, um, uh, Plus, so many people speak so highly of Joe, too. Yeah, and you know, Joe's a, a affected a lot of people's lives and the roles that, he's, that he has played, and he represented our office and, and uh, many folks in, in the law enforcement business. So he brings a, a, a skill set that a lot of people do not have. And let me say this, you followed a larger-than-life guy, Harry Lee, into office, who was very outspoken. Do you think you'd have been the same person in office, the, the fiery Newell Norman we've seen over the years, if you were not following a guy like Harry Lee? Harry was an incredible mentor. Uh, there's so many things that I, that I learned from him directly, indirectly, and, and so forth. Um, I, 
I mean, I could just go on and on. Uh, but I mean, do, he Lee. did influence you a lot. Oh, absolutely. I started working for him. I was 20. Yeah. You know. And you know, there are um, people who are considering um, running uh, for for your seat. Uh, Keith Cowley, who's in your uh, in the JPSO, John Young, the former president of Jefferson Parish. Uh, what do you think about these candidates? Well, you know, the, it's a big office. There's a, a strong allure. Uh, there are a lot of people that think they can do this, uh, and they stand on the outside of, of the organization. It's entirely different when you're inside and you understand what's going on day in and day out. One of the folks that I brought back when I came in in 07 had previously served in, in the sheriff's office as well. And he says, you know, it, it was completely amazing to me. He says, you make more decisions by 10.30 in the morning than yeah. most people will make in a week. And I assume you'll have all the candidates on your radio show when, when the election rolls around. So <laughs> there I mean, you go. then you'll be on this side of the mic yeah. interviewing them. And, and, and on the dark side. On right? the dark side, yes. <laughs> yeah, um, will you be doing like commercials? Will, will we see you doing... Uh, uh, siding commercials or, or uh, rhino shield or whatever? Only your hand-me-downs. <laughs> <laughs> they don't let me do it. Otherwise, do I would. We can't do it. You know, we want to we act like you are a, a host right now and ask you some questions. All right, so, so some topics. If, 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 if the topic comes up on, t on stop and frisk, would you have opinions on that? Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I think it's one tool in the toolbox of an overall crime-fighting strategy. Are you for it or against it? Uh, I think it's, it's, ne it's necessary. Uh, but there's a misunderstanding about what stop and frisk actually is. Everybody thinks about it as that's only one strategy, that's it, that's what you do. You go out on the street and you just start stopping people randomly. That's not actually how it works. It's a small part of an overarching strategy in fighting crime. Uh, that's necessary. All right, what but about it a, has to be constitutional. What about when we talk about the Confederate monuments? The monuments has been a very, very hot issue. I mean, I think part of the, the problem is I see the dialogue that developed around it is that a lot of the folks that, that were represented in these statues represented the contemporary thoughts at that point in time in their life, and many of which were elected leaders. Uh, and we hmm. didn't really, you know, get into that thought process in the dialogue that I heard about what was going on. What about the repealing lines. the Affordable Care Act? The Affordable Care Act, uh, actually, um, M Medicaid expansion has been necessary, quite frankly, for health care. Uh, in this state, when you have 25 to 30 percent of the population that's medically uninsured, uh, it's really difficult to talk around that mm -hmm. issue. Part of the problem in crafting the solution, though, is that uh, insurance companies rate two ways, experience rated or community rated. Mm -hmm. And you need more bodies in community ratings so that you have that average price that comes down so that everybody can afford their insurance. And uh, the, the president, President Trump, spoke at the Boy Scout Jamboree. You've been very involved in the Boy Scouts here in Louisiana. What do you think of his remarks? Do you think they were Actually, appropriate? Actually, I, I didn't get to see him. I was yeah. running around all over the place, and so I, did, I, didn't, I didn't hear his remarks. Well, see, now you're officially part you're of the media because you're an expert on everything now. Right. Now, I don't know about that. I have an opinion, but I'm not sure I'm an expert. <laughs> All right. Well, you're going to act like one on, on radio. And your new show starts September 11th. September 11th. Oh. Yes. All right. Chris, you're... Right. You hope I'm an expert in something. Sheriff, if you want to do weather, you why not? 